In light of everything that's going on with Peggy Goo and Daniel Wang, there has been a conversation in the dance music scene about um, misogyny and just maybe toxic male behavior and fat and the little and the kind of dance music fandom in some sectors. Um, it does seem like uh, people do have a bit of an extra grind with the amount of vitriol and abuse and venom Peggy Goo seems to be getting for being a bit of a cunt, right? Which is not illegal. And then with the collective sort of ambivalence and overlooking that sort of kind of uh, you saw on social with some of the heart, you know, of the big industry figures when it was announced that eric Murillo had unfortunately passed away and of this obviously if the back of him being accused of rape uh by several women and no rape by i think a couple of women and maybe sexual assault by several so um you know there, there is a bit of hypocrisy going on there right everyone's kind of quick to throw stones at peggy but then everyone was sort of making excuses for eric Murillo's quite reprehensible behavior when he was alive and um to kind of i guess conclude the story and hopefully uh, use this opportunity use this story as an opportunity to maybe um, educate some people to educate use the opportunity as, of this story to maybe provide a bit of a reflection point um, for how people kind of conduct themselves in the scene I think it'd be good to sort of cover the, f the finality of it in somewhat where bravely um, one of the victims of Eric Murillo Christine Knight um, has come out and basically you know, made a statement via Mixmag, um, sort of detailing her experience with Eric Muller on that fateful day and what happened uh, post henceforth. And hopefully, I think, my hope is that this is kind of an opportunity for people to sort of reflect on the actions going forward because um, I completely understand maybe the, f I, don't, I don't really understand, but I get why the fans would be a little bit more forgiving of Eric Muller because you're a fan. You don't really see the artist as a human in a way. You sort of see him as an exalted idol, somebody sort of worship in that regard, especially if he was, I don't know if he was a sort of the first seminal DJ that you sort of kind of cottoned on to he introduced you to dance music you really like one of his tunes you know whatever I know fandom can be weird I get it fans are weird and fans are odd it's all one thing the thing that was really disappointed by Eric Miller thing was how the scene dealt with it especially fellow DJs when they were like posting eulogies and making excuses for him and trying to explain away some of the allegations it was like whoa 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 I get it it was really odd really awkward right because what do you do if one of your close friends is accused of what Eric Miller was accused of and then they pass away um you know in unfortunate circumstances should you not honor them i think you should but maybe not publicly i don't think you should maybe especially if they're a public figure in that regard especially you know it's not like they went and robbed this bank before they passed away this is essentially um them leaving you know maybe lo long lasting emotional and physical scars on women across across the world um and using the music or the opportunity they have to be a special dj to exploit and you know really abuse women in a very very uh, vulnerable position especially at night so it's not really a, a thing that you can kind of explain away if anything it's something that you would quite possibly wouldn't want to be associated with in any way shape or form so you wouldn't just say anything right in the ideal world you just be keep it moving and if that person was your friend you'd go you'd kind of honor them privately but in my opinion like i said in the other video i think a lot of the reason why a lot of the djs came out and made excuses for eric miller was because he was such a big personality such a big name in the scene they wanted it to be known to their fan base and to the community overall that they were friends with this guy so they wanted to post their eulogy online so everyone knew so it's a kind of like friendship signaling you know it's the equivalent of virtue signaling that hey i was his friend Friend. I knew him before all the madness and I'm gonna make sure I honor my friend they weren't really friends the people that you hug behind a DJ booth when you're about to do your set right or you're gonna pick up with but it's not a friend friend um but still it's it's in inexcusable no one should be posting messages about trying to explain away somebody's uh predatory um rape behavior that's just maddening isn't it but you know Kristen like bravely come out and basically explain the situation in some detail and it's even more heartbreaking coming from the actual victim herself do you know what I mean which makes sense but Jesus Christ man what an awful story but I'm glad it's been you know resolved in some way shape I, I don't know resolved because I don't know what somebody like chris I, I wonder how she actually feels about it like you know because i think from what i've read so far online and what i know i'm not a woman i don't really know how that experience is you know going through a rape kit is one of the worst experiences ever from what i've seen actual rape convictions are super super low even though you know you'd think they weren't but it's pretty difficult to prove somebody actually did whatever you said they thought they did especially if you don't have evidence for it um you know hard hitting evidence i don't know whatever it is but it's just it's just a it sounds like an absolutely hell of a situation to go through and then you go through it and of course to see the scene that you're part of turn their back on you kind of thing or accuse you of being a, a you know 
a slag or whatever it may be. It must be horrible to do. So I wonder what she feels, how, what, what does she feel? Does she feel like this is a resolution or did she actually want him to um, face justice and actually face his crimes? Um, and that would be a good way to conclude it because, you know, of course, untimely passing away isn't necessarily, um, isn't a good, isn't kind of, an, isn't a, doesn't trump justice i was imagine i would imagine anyway but anyway so article from chris uh, mix mega said um christian knight it's so important for women to come forward dj christian knight a woman who pressed charges against eric miller and inspired dance music's me too movement shares a story and of course it's by the great annabelle ross who also has been covering a few other topics concerning such things on dance music so the following on September 1st, the day that superstar house uh, music DJ Eric Miller died, the woman who pressed charges against him for sexually assaulting her uh, last December had been thinking about taking her own life. Heartbreaking. Miami-based DJ producer Kristen Knight and her boyfriend DJ superstar Roger Sanchez had been in the Universal Studios in Orlando trying to belatedly celebrate their free anniversary, but Knight was struggling to feel anything resembling joy. I couldn't enjoy myself on a roller coaster or having lunch or watching a show. Uh, um, I was like, that's it. My my life is done. I can't live with the anxiety anymore. Um, she says, driving back from Orlando to Miami, Knight contemplated ending it all, which is heartbreaking to say the least, isn't it? And it's even worse as well, because I remember when the allegations first came about, if you went on certain you know, pages and groups and stuff. Her name was getting thrown about all over the place. And the things people were saying about her and her boyfriend were just like, as if they were complicit in this is just shocking, 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 shocking. So that scene, that's that Miami scene has to take a real long, hard, real hard, long look at itself, man. It continues. Then a friend called and told her to pull over. Eric Miller was dead. Knight had been due to face Miller in court in three days' time, which is mad, isn't it? Now she wouldn't have to. I couldn't believe that I had been considering ending my life to find out Eric's life had ended instead. And I look at as that as a sign to keep going and talk about it when the time was right. Because, you know, you, would, you couldn't, you know, she would be excused for, you know, celebrating his death to be honest especially considering what she went through um that time almost a year to the day after she says she was sexually assaulted by marilla is now uh for the past four months um knight has been subject to vile abuse online death threats slanderous and basic uh, articles uh published by dodgy entertainment sites um what she describes as a deeply disappointed lack of support from the music industry again take a hard look at itself in which both she and marilla worked she says nobody here locally has called me really to be like hey i'm sorry about what happened to you we still support you we're still going to put you on exactly this is the most distressing part of it. and this probably explains why a lot more women in dance music don't come forward and say stuff because imagine this is not really a good op uh, example because she hasn't done that you know she's been a bit of a bitch she hasn't really done that anything wrong but let's imagine um the peggy goose situation is a very popular dj with the same level of hype and you know, the connections in the scene, but it's a man, right? And they are, I wouldn't say sexually assaulted, but they're being a little bit inappropriate with women in the scene. Not going as far as being a full-on creep, but just, you know, somebody else you don't really enjoy the company of, right? In the same vein of a of a pet goo, you don't really enjoy her company. She maybe gets a bit leery when she's drunk and, you know, whatever, it gets annoying. If you're a victim of that and you've been, a, you know, you've been a green room stuck with this person and they're freaking berating you and making you feel like shit, you're not going to be inclined to report them or say something in public because they have they are associated with some big people industry heavyweight especially i imagine in the miami scene that's probably interconnected and everyone knows everyone and you know like you you know if you say something it could potentially be the end of your career but again we're not talking about slander we're not talking about a fight we're talking about somebody abusing you physically mentally like in a sexual manner, like that should be grounds for termination for the uh, abuser, not for you. But in some way, shape or form, I don't know why this has happened. Maybe it's because of some of the other stories have been baseless and false. I don't know what it is, but it's something, I don't know what it is about the dance music scene where guys and girls, whatever, if they're fans of somebody, they excuse away such behavior. It's so, so odd, especially when you think that nightlife inherently, right? Just from looking from the outside, I'd imagine, is an inherently more dangerous place to navigate if, if if you're a woman right if you're a woman or if you're somebody that uh, pertains to the lgbtq community i'd imagine nightlife is just a really dangerous place for you to be in but it's also the only place where you can kind of go and express yourself right girls get dressed up to look hot just for themselves and their friends um people within the lgbt community you know go to these um, clubs and these locations to hang out with people who are just like them to feel like they're part of something to feel like they're not alone and then that's also the place where you're at risk. 
And then imagine if you're in a part of a subculture where you're not allowed to say something out loud because you might damage your connections. You're sort of like muzzled. It's horrible, man. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. It continues. When one of Knight's EPs was released the day after Murillo died, an unfortunate circum um, consequence, I can imagine, um, something that had been scheduled for months and that was the last thing on her mind when she learned of his death, she was attacked by Murillo supporters and even close friends for her lack of sensitivity. <laughs> the absolute cheek of people. People are willing to post RIP messages about Eric Murillo on their page, right? Because he's their friend, right? And they should be allowed to, which is, you know, I'm skeptical of, but I understand the premise of it. But then she releases an EP the day after and she's been insensitive. Come on, give your head a wobble. It continues. She was like, you know, it's in bad taste and you shouldn't be posting that. People are taking, are talking and you know, they're like, what is she using as publicity? And it's another woman saying this so, which is even more frightening. It continues. Anyone who's been a victim of sexual assault or rape knows how absurd the suggestion is. Knight never wanted to become the face of the movement that exposed Eric Miller as a predator. She didn't even want to be publicly identified. But when the attacks on her character began, some of them started by Murillo himself and built a momentum after his death. She knew that as soon as the dust settled, she wanted to set the record straight. And the interesting thing too about all these people defending him especially people passing rip messages when the story first came out and he was still alive right with us at the time none of those um so so-called dj friends or friends in a scene were posting any messages of support in public no one was saying anything no one no one said a word they just left they just kind of left him alone and if anything you could you could kind of it would be safe to say that having to deal with the consequences of your actions to that level if you're Eric Muller and you're being accused of what you've been accused of and the evidence is you know resounding and you're finally going to face the judge um and you're going to be called out for the kind of you know uh, abuse that you've inflicted on people over the years it doesn't help when you're being left alone and you've been isolated by your scene and your industry and your friends and no one's coming to, around to help you because I think if if I remember correctly he was found alone in his home like it just reported like he wasn't coming you know, he wasn't around and they went to his home knocked and they found him dead so he died alone. So it's probably safe to say that the people that abandoned him were the ones that were also posting eulogies about him online. It's like, if you're going to back your rapist friend, back him when he's going through it. And then we'll actually know your strength for your character. It's always good backing him when he passes away and then pretending you're, you're, you're doing it to honor his legacy. Like, get out of here. It continues. On Friday, December 9th, December 6th, sorry, 2019, um, Knight and Marilla both played at a private party in Miami uh, during Art Basel. She'd met Marilla while DJing on a few occasions in the past, but they'd never spoken at length. At the party, she befriended a woman who was going back to Marilla's house after the event early the next morning and invited Knight to join them. She called her boyfriend Sanchez to tell him she was um, going to Marilla's, a colleague of Sanchez of some 30 years. The pair toured together. So that's what makes even more heinous. Eric Marilla actually knew um, her boyfriend quite intimately, right? Especially in a scene, right? Uh, for the scene, that's probably a lot of experience going touring around Australia and New Zealand. They probably spent a lot of time together in a prolonged period of time. So she would assume you're safe with somebody, right? If that person knows your boyfriend like you'd assume it's okay so she worked well within her rights to go back to his home at that time um she says here eric got on the phone with roger and he was like don't worry i got her i'll take care of her i'll make sure she gets home safe right this is what makes him even more sick he says um it was only once they got back to Marilla's place that he started acting inappropriately asking like what she was really there for but nothing so concerning that weren't leaving again being a creep and being annoying but it, that's that's probably a sign in it of like um, future behavior it really shouldn't but it probably is if you're that willing to kind of spite your friend and kind of go behind his back and act like that to your friend's girlfriend then it probably says a lot about your character and it probably is something that's probably call outable maybe maybe it's something maybe it's something that was probably evident in his past actions that no one actually pulled him up on which inevitably led to this you know what i mean it's horrible um Da, 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 but nothing concerned to want to leave night borrowed a, a, a spare swimsuit from Murillo's pool house and they all got in the pool it was fun morning until Murillo grabbed Knight's face and tried to kiss her this was enough to make Knight decide to leave um she collected her things and once she finally figured out how to get out of Murillo's compound she went outside to call an uber but Murillo followed her out onto the street completely naked Jesus Christ crying and begged her to come back inside one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people who love Eric they have this kind of sympathy for him uh, they feel bad for him like his life is so rough or you know he did drugs and he has problems um, it was the same sympathy that made him a victim of his Jesus Christ Knight recovered um, Murillo with a towel and walked him back into uh, outside of his 
house after crying on my shoulder and telling me how hard his life was he convinced me that he'd go out and put shorts on and be respectful and come back to the house so again this is classic sign of a uh, an abuser right um very manipulative you know um coercing her to come back into the house when she knows she probably shouldn't be in there all the alarm bells are going off in her head but because he's ex has experience of doing this many many times he knows what to say to get somebody to earn somebody's trust again and inevitably uh, use the opportunity to take advantage of them so it's a very heartbreaking story super super and again these details are you know they're extensive now but essentially the the, the general outline of the story we knew this prior to his death everyone knew that what happened kind of right and they still were willing to defend him online fans and djs are like again fans are weird you should still look at yourself oddly if you are you know sending this woman death threats but if you're an actual professional in the scene and you actually care about the people that come to your show and you care about the safety of your fellow peers too because she's a dj herself you should be disgusted at yourself mate disgusted this guy was a monster bro and you guys were like aiding and abating his he's he's uh his his behavior because of what because you he, he you hung out him back in the day at a beef or something come on man um it continues though uh, other woman had fallen asleep on the couch and knight and marillo dj together for a while until marillo had passed out on the couch knight went outside to have a cigarette and started to feel incredibly sleepy too tired to even call an uber she went back inside and lay down on the first bed she could find in the room upstairs fully clothed when she woke up she was naked and marilla was walking around the room also completely naked i was like eric why am i naked and he was like i don't know and i was like i remember things i was like where the fuck are my clothes i basically freaked out at the time he said nothing happened knight was already feeling flashbacks of being assaulted by marilla like oh yeah yeah it's disgusting man Reg registering his face and body on top of hers as she went in and out of consciousness i was like a corpse she says and i was saw his face and it was like what and then i blacked out again i was so angry i was like hypersensitive of everything my whole body you know um it feels like pins and needles all over your skin when you realize oh my god i've been touched i didn't i didn't allow it and this is a type where you are no and this and in this type of way where you're just blatantly being used god almighty and again um full credit to her wanting to because i'm assuming um this was with christine's consent to put this minor detail into the story as um triggering as it can be i think it needs to be said in this plain way it needs to be put out there like what actual abuse sounds like what um manipulation actually sounds like um what coercion sounds like uh what this abuse actually sounds like in real life because this is this is ridiculous and again this is out this is away from the venue this isn't like a drunken uh fumbled um you know sexual encounter in a nightclub toilet somewhere right where maybe the lines and gets blurred somewhere where they shouldn't someone says no it's no you walk away but this is after the actual event back at that person's home before they left, he spoke to the boyfriend on the phone and assured him that he was going to protect her. He was going to look out for her because she was a friend. And then look what happens. Like, it's all his fault. No one else is to blame for this. She shouldn't feel anywhere guilty whatsoever. Um, it continues. Miller kept saying that nothing had happened, but Knight grew increasingly upset and started yelling at him for to let her out of the house. Once outside, she called an Uber, then Sanchez, and then the police. As I was sitting in a glass outside of his house crying, I thought about numerous things. I thought about maybe I just leave here now and pretend like everything had never happened, but that wasn't an option for me. I thought about being uh, that woman who came forward 10 or 20 years from now and had the credibility questioned. Jesus Christ, she's thinking about that already. Fuck. That was an option for me. And then I thought about everything about what would happen when I did call the police. I knew that it would be a daunting and I then thought about my daughter. If it was her in my position, you know. So once you call the cops, everything you do is under investigation and your body becomes a crime scene. Yeah, God almighty. And that's how the rest of the day went. It would be another eight months before the rape kit results came back. Eight months. So that's what explains why the conviction rates are so low. Uh, by that time, you know, people are probably suffering from, you know, mad mental episodes i don't know what's going on with the abuser like eight months is insane um and an anguishing wait where night would check in with the police every fortnight always to be told to call back in another two weeks i was like hey what's going on i'm stuck here knowing that the dna was going to come back a match and eric was just gonna was just off touring around the world flying on private jets possibly raping other people the backlog of rape kits to be processed especially in major US cities such as miami is woefully long um other um four other women had reported a rape at the same treatment center on the same day as night all before 6 a.m four other women not connected with Marilla, but jesus christ again nightlife is already dangerous as it is for women 
And then to be in the industry and to be taking advantage of your fellow peers is just unforgivable. It really is. Um, it continues. Um, the most shocking thing about my story is how common it is, says Knight, who wasn't surprised when so many of Eric Murillo's peers and fans continue to utilize Jim after his death in spite of the assault and the sexual battery charged against him. Even after Mixed Mag published 10 more accounts, that's what I'm saying at the time of writing. Everyone, it wasn't like this is like a rumor and it was like a thing where he said, she said, no, it was a detailed account that she then went to the police, filed charges, got a rape kit done, and then other women off the back of hearing her story came out and corroborated their experience with Eric Mueller. And still these motherfuckers went out posting, oh, he was a tortured, what was that message someone posted? He had, he had his, he had his issues, issues. Bro, issues are maybe not saying I love you to your parents, not going around raping peer, you know, fellow DJs, like what the, madness, bro. Um, she says here, we live in a world where people support Trump. She says people have supported toxic people all through history just because they had charisma and power, you know, or if they were talented. People are so disconnected that they can't see that if it had happened to them or someone that they love or child, that it would be like them to experience. Um, along with receiving torrent of abuse um, after Miller died of acute um, ketamine toxicity and ruled an accidental drug overdose by the Miami Dade County Medical Examiner. And again, he died on his own, no friends. So everyone is eulogizing him begging it where were you when he actually needed you hmm? there we go knight was contacted by many supporters and fellow survivors including other women who say that they were raped by marilla who applauded her courage she doesn't see herself as brave she says i did what i thought was supposed to do again she definitely is brave but she's grateful that her quarter police sparked a year's industry-wide long overdue conversation about sexual assault which makes me think like everyone's always talking about oh we're open when the clubs are open we're gonna be able to have localized scenes which ain't gonna happen everyone's talking about we're gonna have uh the resurgence of local djs and residents and all this sort of stuff's not gonna happen we already seen what's going on with play graves play graves that were going on early in the summer people were flying in djs from all over the world to go play their events because they were worried about selling tickets you know during a global pandemic so the same thing will happen right everyone will just talk a big game but the reality is the world will still be fucked up in terms of uh, booking people and not actually promoting a local community but the good thing i think is this pause has made people kind of reflect on their behavior and how they conduct themselves in the scene and maybe their approach to their craft and maybe how they approach their family life the work-life balance that's been a good thing i think the idea that we're going to be a localized scene thing is not going to, it's not going to happen but i think the ability for fans and people in general to see who the creeps and the dickheads are and the toxic people and the grifters and the money hungry ones and the ones that are about the scene you know the scammers like we're able to see who's who right now that everything is sort of slowed down and it's not the distractions of parties and instagram videos and stuff it's all everyone sort of showing up their true colors that's been a good thing about it so hopefully that's what will come of this going forward she said, honestly i'm tired of seeing it i'm tired of seeing women and these uh, stories kind of being brushed to the side uh, dealing with in, in environments that are toxic and sexual harassment and normalizing this behavior growing up as a woman myself and being objectified by men my entire life i'm over it i'm tired of not feeling safe in my own skin i should be able to hang out with a guy friend and not worry about being raped of course like it's 2020 the lack of support and the scene that brushed me under the mat um has been as dampened nights of appetite for dj in the near future that's awful that's sad to hear the she plans to keep producing and releasing music keeping the narrative going and creating a safe space for women to come forward and talk about their very top to a very heavy topic in her main goal now that's why i said before as well I, i'm really big advocate of the idea that if, if we are going to be a subculture and we're going to be a scene it shouldn't just be about putting on raves and getting high it should be about looking after people it should be about hey let's provide an alternative to the main because if this again it's not excusable but if this happened in like a mainstream soho glitzy pub somewhere right cool whatever they let any anyone and anyone with money into those venues right uh people with ill motives and stuff always around it predatory promoters managers whatever it's just full of absolute nightmare people but in the scene that we are actually cultivating where we actually come together with a shared um love for music or a genre or a scene or an aesthetic or you know way of life whatever it may be we owe it to each other to be looking out for one another right it shouldn't be a space where i would imagine like i would i would think if you're a girl going out you should feel the more safest as you can go into an actual night that you know is organized by people that are really in love with the music that you're into right that's where they should be look because it's about the music it's just about the ability to go out and hook up but because this kind of hook up um 
um what was it not hookup this sort of like hookup um project x sort of thing sort of still exists in some club spaces it's a weird place to kind of battle with and turn into a safe space right because you have a door picker but then you have very handsy bartenders you have a door picker but then you have uh people inside that are purposely you know dampening and sullying the environment it's hard to kind of balance those things but i think if everyone sort of like take collective responsibility you know from us punters to people in the industry to people working at the bars and the door it will try and make it a better place going forward because we what we can't be having is having women feeling that they're unsafe going to these places and then getting put off from pursuing a career in these spaces or in these scenes because they feel like they're going to be taken advantage of that shouldn't be a thing she says he had like a support the um a conventional path to justice was snatched from night when Murillo died never to face court or to go to jail for his crimes but she celebrates a small victory such as when Murillo's friends and supporters take down their tributes on social media and now when she is telling her story publicly first time it's healing for me and healing from a huge part of my life for me personally anyone that put up a tribute to him you're you're out right I, call, I rule you out if you have to be shamed into taking on your tribute to you out like you don't need to do that publicly you could do it privately if you actually loved him as a friend send him some money to his parents or his family go to his funeral in real life um do whatever you can do to honor him as a friend but you don't need to post about it publicly and excuse his behavior if someone did do that and you're a fan of theirs like you have to really question your fandom it continues justice will um will be uh, seeing the women unafraid of calling out the person who assaulted them every single time they did us not living in fear or being persecuted by coming forward with allegations of someone who raped us it's so important for women to come up forward if they're being sexually assaulted because because if not, this was what we get. 30 years of serial rapists on the loose. Um, and Ross is a female journalist. So yeah, um, big up Christine for coming out and speaking about it. Um, Christine, right? Is it Christine? Yeah, Christine for speaking about it again. Big up to her. Um, hopefully this is an end um, or puts a, a bit of a full stop on the issue and hopefully highlights exactly how uh, appalling his behavior was prior to his death and maybe make some people take a hard, long hard look at their behavior as well in any way shape or form if they might have helped or abetted whatever was going on man because god almighty but yeah i don't know man I, I, it's just it, it was just a it was a that was a weird one so i definitely understand why some people are out there thinking hold on everyone's got all this smoke for peggy but then when this guy got essentially accused of legitimately raping somebody in his own scene a fellow dj who happened to be a friend uh the girlfriend of one of his friends like it's like like no 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 you can't be uh, you can't be annoyed at uh, peggy for being a little bit of a bad neighbor when you're excusing that kind of behavior i don't want to hear that argument from you whatsoever i don't want to hear it <laughs> 